Hello from Always in Stitches. It is an exciting day. If you are a fan of Kafe Facet Fabric, you need to come see our short store. We just received a beautiful shipment and I'm gonna go through it a bolt at a time because like Peter, Peter's got the best word for this. He calls it eye candy and it is eye candy. This is the dessert was what he said. I said something about, you know, I don't wanna drag this out. And he wisely said to me, Nope, this is dessert. You want to make it last as long as you can. And that is absolutely true. Oh, here comes another one. Nancy's bringing one more that evidently didn't get in the way. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this fabric is... Thanks, Nancy. Thank um, you. She has our, she's our inventory queen. Yeah, she's the one you want to butter up if you want to know anything about <laughs> what's coming in and out of the store. But the reason I'm ex really excited, more excited than I usually am about CAFE, is they're having a challenge. It's called Color Me CAFE Fashion Challenge. There's over $7,000 worth of prizes. And um, I'm gonna have this, we'll have the flyer available and we'll also have this on our website, uh, on the homepage, so you can really follow what's going on. I'll get with the, our gal that does our website and make sure she puts it up there for you. But basically what they're doing is they're um, encouraging you to make a garment out of this collection of Cave's fabric because it's his 85th birthday. And when I was at Quilt Market, I got to actually go to his birthday party, which was phenomenal. They surprised him and he didn't know that everybody was gonna show up wearing Cave garments. So the shirt I have on is made out of one of Cave's fabrics. And uh, it was so funny because I walked up to his booth and he and Brandon were sitting there and he said, oh, I love your garment. And I said, well, thank you. And at this point, he didn't know that this thing was going on. And so um, then later on that day, at the end of the day at market, they all gathered together and all the, suddenly there was like, you know, 50, 75 people wearing clothes made out of Cave's fabric. And it was really a fun surprise because he looked up from it and then he kind of looked around and then he was like, oh my goodness. And he, he was so excited and so pleased about it. But um, anyway, it's his 85th birthday. I think his birthday was in... I want to say it was in December, maybe. Anyway, so he's already 85. But um, in celebration of that, this fabric line came out. And this is kind of a way to honor him. So you have opportunities to make a quilted garment, a pieced garment, adult fashion apparel, or children's fashion apparel. And in those four categories, if you make a garment out of his fabrics, then you'll be entered to win the contest. So I thought this was a really good opportunity to show you what came in and what a wide selection we have for you to work with to get in that contest. And I just, wouldn't it be fun to have somebody from our store win that contest, Peter? I mean. It would be awesome. Oh, it would just be so exciting to know that somebody won one of those prizes. And there's lots of them. So let me just, like one at a time, this is just going to be like, cr like cruising through dessert, like you said, except it has like 40 courses. <laughs> <laughs> This is the key lime pie and the cheesecake and the, the chocolate bomb cake and the blonde brownie with the ice cream and this. Can you tell I like dessert? And the tiramisu. Oh, tiramisu. And the red velvet. Oh, red velvet cake and cupcakes. This is... This and the is, cannoli. Oh, yeah. Don't forget the cannoli. Leave the gun, but take the cannoli. So, um, anyway, that's a re movie reference again. <laughs> Bonus points if you know what we're talking about. So, I want to show you, first of all, just, just let's talk a little bit about what's in front of me here. These are what are called shot cottons, okay? And they're wovens, and these come in stripes. These are, are what we might have called homespuns. They're calling them a shot cotton, and they're called a shot cotton because the way it's woven, they shoot the two fabrics between each other. And what that means is that the, the fabric is the same color on the back side as it is the front side what makes it really, really, really nice for garments um, because if the, the underneath side of the fabric shows through with your garment, it's gonna be the same color as the surface. So um, I love his shot cottons. They are absolutely yummy. I'm gonna be saying that word a lot because these are just the greatest. And what I love about these is the warp and the weft, and Peter's a weaver so he can speak to this much better than I can, but the, the warp is one color and the weft, and I probably did that backwards, but they're different colors. So you get almost a tonal, does it pick it up, Peter, in the this picture? This one it does. The okay. red, not so much, but this one it will. Yeah, so you can see that one of the one of the fabric, one of the threads going through is kind of a pinkish purple, maybe, mm -hmm. and the other thread is more of a blue. And so you get this kind of almost a mermaid kind of effect where the color 
depth is, is the color depth is just so brilliant in this. And um, it lends itself to picking up different tones with when you put it with other fabrics. So I love that we got all these shot cottons in because you can now put those with his really bold solids and get a real good feel. Look how just, <gasps> aren't these luscious? I'm just saying, these are beautiful. They, they, they really, um, they have a wonderful hand to them. They, they're, they're very, very soft. And these would be great in a garment. These would wash and wear so comfortably. They would breathe very well, you know, if you're in a climate that's, that's warm. Um, look at this green. Mm. There's a pretty peach. And then this one here, this is, look at this one. This is almost a black with a, an indigo blue, not indigo, it's a turquoisey blue color. I love that. So those are some nice pieces. I think those are shot cottons, okay? That's what they call shot cottons. We have them in stripes as well. So um, there's some nice stripes. Again, if you're working with garments, oh, there, that's another shot cotton. Ooh, that's pretty. It looks like that's, sunshine. I love that. I do too. Look at that. I think that's so my favorite shot right there. That, that see, shot cotton. Really? Okay. But you that like color. orange and yellow. I used that color on the binding on a quilt and I fell in love with it. Yeah, that would but be was But it, it had stripes, but it was the shade and I love that shade. Yeah, yellow. I love, this is a really pretty shade. We'll, 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 we're going to put these with some of his so you can see the beauty of it. Um, and, and I'm glad you mentioned bindings, Peter, because... These make beautiful bindings. These stripes, when you cut this on the bias, oh my gosh, so pretty, so, so pretty. The um, homespuns do tend to ravel a little bit more because of the way that they're woven or these shock cottons. It's kind of an interchangeable word. But, um, so I would, I would be very friendly with my starch. I wouldn't be afraid to use this little bit of starch on these. Um, and I'm typically not that starchy. <laughs> oh gosh. We cut ourselves up around here. Okay, so there's your solids, shot cottons, okay? These are your traditional quilting cotton. Um, I kind of hate to say that, though, because the mill that CAFE demands, in a good way, that his fabric be printed on does a, a little finer quality. Um, the thread count and the way that it's woven is a little bit, it's a little thinner, but it's more durable. And, and you know, this is where they, we need feel a vision. Um, the, the way, if you ever touch a, a cave fabric, you're gonna notice the way it feels. It has a more of a polished finish. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. It's like a polished cotton. Um, so his, his uh, quilting, what are called quilting cottons are a little more finer weave than what we're maybe used to in other quilting cottons. Um, but these are standard 45 inch width ish. They say 45 inch, but we all know it ends up being around 40, 42. Um, so that's what these are. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go through every one. So don't don't panic and say I can't see the lines because you're looking at the ends. I'm gonna make sure you see every single bolt. And then the other thing we have here, these are kind of a fun thing um, that they've come up with. And these are designs, what they call them is design strips. And I want to say that's six inches. I'm going to be foolish and not know exactly the width of it, but I want to say it's six inches. And, and you know, we see the design I strips. I, I was under the impression it was two times the width of a standard strip. I think it's more than that. You know, we can but measure But we never it. looked it up. We, I'm going to measure real quick. There's a cutting mat. There's a cutting mat. Let me Let's climb measure. over here. Climb. Climb. Let's see exactly how wide they are. We can measure that. Except that cutting mat's messed up. Here, let's... The cutting mat's cut off. The cutting mat's cut off. Yeah, Awful. there's six inches. Okay. Six. Cappy for six. the win. Cappy for the win. Six inches. Six inches. Well, that's generous. It is. And, but you know why it's six inches? Why? It's because why? his patterns are so big uh, that in a two and a half inch strip, you just don't get it, man. You just I'm, don't get it. I get it now. You get it now, don't you? <laughs> yeah. But, but, but I think that was a wise decision yeah. on their part. I think um, a two and a half inch strip of K... Is just not enough, man. You see me climb through here. This, this climb, climb. Okay, so these we have these design rolls. These are lovely. Um, the challenge asks that you use three different fabrics. So this would be a really good way to get three different fabrics and not have to buy a lot of yardage. 
Um, and there's some cute jackets you can make. Um, there's, you know, tops. There's all kinds of, you know, just use your imagination for the garments. But isn't that, oh, look at that leaf. That's why you can't, in seeing a two and a half inch strip, you'd lose, you'd lose too much of the design. You so, know what those would be great for? What's that? Dog scarves. Oh, yeah. I don't think it would win the garment challenge, but who cares? How cute would that be? What if I use three colors? Yeah, well, there you go. It's right? a garment. I got to do three different things? They don't have a category. Oh, but it's not. A category. That's it's not a category for dogs. Oh. Which I think would be wise if they had one. I don't know if Kafe has a dog or not. But as you can see, these are just, it's just a little nibble of it. And I love that they're a six inch width because then I really get the whole piece. We have some of these on the bolt, obviously, we've purchased. When, when I look at fabric, you know, I've talked about how we purchase fabric for the store. Um, when we look at fabric, CAFE literally has usually almost 80 to 100 different bolts. Yikes. And it's like, okay, you want to buy the whole collection? I think I've gone all the way around. Yep. It's like, you want to buy the whole okay, collection? Okay, now do this one. Oh, Oh, yeah, one's a light and one's a dark. So there, look at that. See the difference? This is what he calls his light colorways, which, you know, in the color world, that seems very bold. This is the dark colorway. So these are darker. But I, lo I love, these are rich. I think these are just rich. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Um, but as I was saying, when we order fabric, he literally, there's like 80 to 100 different bolts to choose from. And I... Gosh, I would love to order it all in. And I know there's some shops that do. I, and I, some of the names of the shops have escaped me, but I know there are shops that buy every single piece of CAFE. And uh, that's great, but dang, it's a lot of fabric. So we try to kind of pick the cream of the crop. Um, we try to pick the ones that maybe we didn't have from the previous lines because he does recolor things when he sees a particular design or a pattern that he likes he will recolor that same design again and again all right you get the gist of these i think i'm gonna okay. kind of move over <laughs> yeah we, we could just sit and look at this all day because i'm coming back around to the front yeah. okay the other thing that we have are these 10 inch um charm squares 10 inch 10-inch charm squares, I guess, is what we're going to call them. 10-inch um, squares. 10-inch squares. So they're 10 inches by 10 inches. Same thing. It's going to have a really nice selection. We're going to fan these. They're pretty much what you just go, th go through. Now, this does combine some of those darks. It's not just the lights or the darks. They're, these tend to be a little more... Um, That's actually a really good 10-inch um, pack because yeah. I see a good assortment. Right. A great assortment. And look at it with that. Look at that. Yes. See there, picking those up. Mm. Okay, so we have the 10-inch squares, and then we have, and these, okay, this, the, the shirt that I'm wearing was made from a wide back. What? I know, no comments about the wide parts that had to go in it, but I used a wide back fabric. Now, when you work with garments, typically they're basing it on a 60-inch width of fabric, because most garment fabric comes 60 inches wide. Well, quilting backs come usually 108. Let me see. I'm going to guess this is 108. 108 inches. So if I'm making a garment, buying a wide back is a really good choice because I don't have to buy as much fabric. Now, and, and again, I need touch-a-vision, Peter. How can we do that? Hap make that happen? We need touch-a-vision. Oh, I know. Come to the store. Oh, we need to do it in um, VR. VR? What's virtual VR? reality. Oh, virtual reality. Yeah, if we do a but virtual, if we film it in virtual reality and then they put on the glasses or the whatever you do for VR, then it's like they're surrounded by it. Then I don't surrounded. know. Maybe it was, I'm just guessing. I, that, I really that, don't that, have a clue. Yeah, okay. Well, we don't have touch-a-vision, but if we did, this is the silkiest... Um, gosh, I, I don't have enough adjectives to describe it. It's, it's, uh, it's a sateen finish. Sateen, good word. Okay, good word. That's what makes it so silky. It is. It's just, mm, and, and as you can see, I've worn this and washed the shirt that I have on. It's made out of the very same fabric. I wore this to quilt market. I've, oh, well, there's a thread. See, I work in a quilting store. Um, I've worn this I've uh, several times. I've washed it, just thrown it in the washer and the dryer. It comes right out beautifully. Well, it kinda... It's stunning for being washed in the washing yeah, machine. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's, it's held its color. Okay, this, is, this has to be a back of a quilt for sure, for me. 
Yes. That is vivid. Well, get your yardage before it's gone because you know how what I happens. I wonder if Hildegard's watching. She likes this K facet because oh, she likes she? the Tula pink. She probably likes K facet. She likes Tula. K and Tula are pretty good buds. If uh, you hear, they talk with a great deal of respect for each other's designs, and um, they're both artists. I mean, in the, in the industry of quilting, you have people who just design fabric, and they do a beautiful job. But when you have people like Kaif and Tula who have a true graphic design background, who come from an artistic bent, they understand color dynamics and the way colors should go together in a way that not everybody understands in the fabric world. So that's why when you see their fabrics, they're so stunningly beautiful. And uh, these two wide backs, I have a suspicion won't last very long. But, if, but wouldn't that make a beautiful garment? I mean, uh, even a man's shirt. I would love this in a man's shirt. You know what? I would, I'm inspired to do like a kimono with that. Oh, yes. Like one of those with a full sleeves. Yes. With a fuller length. Yep. Um, just so you can get the appreciation of the pattern on that. Right. And that's the other thing. You're not, I mean, when we make uh, quilts out of Cave's fabric, we just don't do them justice. You or don't get to see I the pattern. I should say a, um, a robe. A like robe? A, yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd be nice. Like a, th those pajama robes. Those pajama yeah. robes, yeah. It, well, anyway, so that's what this fabric is. So we've got different types of fabric here, all designed by Cave. Um, so they all go together. They would all qualify for the quilting challenge. So now that I've kind of shown you these, let's just, what do you think? Let's just go through the eye candy, Peter. Uh-huh. One bolt at a time. Um, and then I'm going to tell you a little secret about the number. So each K fabric line, because of the way inventory works, has a little number. And when it starts with PB, um, that typically is one that... Um, the cave himself has designed. So they're all part of his collective group. So Brandon Mabley um, and uh, Philip Jacobs, they all work together to design his fabrics. But this one has got that nice pastel kind of neutral color to it. Um, if I'm going to put a shot cotton with it, I'm probably going to pull that. Look how lovely that looks. Man, how'd you do that so fast? Well, you know, it's my job. But isn't that pretty? Um, I love the the zigzag, and that's chevron maybe. That's the way to say that of that fabric. Chevron's beautiful. Chevron's beautiful with the gray Dots background. Dots and stripes. Yeah, just mm, again, that's another one would make a great binding. And it's tonal too. It's shaded. It is tonal. Yeah, it gives it so much depth. So I've got a card over here. I'm going to drop these on the cart so that because they haven't even put these on the floor. Um, these were just put into our system on Friday or Saturday. And the staff hasn't even had a chance to set these up out on our sales floor. So, um, one, one lucky customer spied the cart and then asked, went to the floor and asked uh, one of the associates and was able to get some cuts. Ooh, that's that. They were very special. Yes. All right. Now, here's another one. Oh, I love this. This, um, this leaf. Here's what's fun about this fabric to me is these, the vines have this shot of kind of a rusty color. Yes. And it's such a neat pop against the purple and the teal and the kind of lime green in there. The black just really sets it off. Um, okay, if I'm picking a color to go with that one in my shot cottons, I'm probably gonna go this way. Yeah, picks that, that gray? green really picks well. Picks that green up really well. Yeah, I love that. This isn't bad either though. Look at that. That's pretty too. So, so this is why when we ordered these shot cottons, we tried to get a little variety of things to kind of go with it. Love that one. That one's really pretty. Oh, this one. Mm. Okay, Peter, we're going to pick your favorite to go with this. Look here. There we go. Oh, isn't that stunning? Nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, love this pattern. I love how the blue, that kind of electric blue, he uses that a lot. Kind of a royal blue color against the green and the purple. Um, and that's the artistry I'm talking about with Kaif, the way he designs. The colors are just, uh, he, he, he knows a color wheel. All I can tell you is he knows his way around a color wheel. There's, there's no, uh, no trick in him. Oh, I love this piece. You're gonna, I'm going to have to just say I love them all, okay? Yep, you love them all. I love them all, and I'll, have to, I'll quit saying I love this piece. I love that piece because I do love them all. Um, this one's just a stunning, stunning, stunning piece. I don't know what he's calling it. The, the, he has different names for the designs. Twigs. This is called Twigs. It looks like Twigs. 
And I love the pink in the background of that, that pink against that kind of orange red. It's so pretty. Oh, this one too. Look at this. This one shows up really good on camera. Does it show up good on camera? Oh, it's Isn't it stunning. Funny how you can take a picture of something and get a whole different perspective. It, it kind of helps you find the lights and the darks. Yeah, I love that. And you know what? I would still put that with this yellow. Look what that does. Kind of pops it. There's kind of a deeper orange in there and it almost kind of pulls that orange red out. Um, sometimes you have to create the contrast. I put, try that light pink. Oh, the light pink? Yeah. Okay. Let's get that one out. See Peter's pick, does. light Peter's pink. Peter's pick, light pink. Okay, we'll go with it. Let's try it. Try it, see what we think. See if I'm... Ooh, yeah. Like it, like it. Let me get closer. Because I, I was spying this really light pink line in there. Yeah. And I didn't know if it if it would pull it out or not. It does. It does. It really does. It's subtle. It's subtle. It, you know what it does? It makes the brilliance of that red and, and kind of burgundy, orange, yellows, all those colors that are in there kind of pull out too. So yeah, that's a pretty, another pretty piece. Oh, well, I'm not even gonna put this pink one down. Look at this. Oh, Look at that, baby. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? We need to see the bloom horizontal. We need to see the bloom horizontal. Yeah, right. then I can fill the whole camera with it. Let me open her up. Sandy just snuck in the side door. She's. This is going to have to be uh, the CAFE facet event starts. So you need to put it on the on the web page, on the front page. Is it on the front page? Okay. It's not on the front page, but I will, I will put it there. Okay, so it'll be on the front page for you guys to look at. Look how fun this is, and then here it is with a with the uh, piece that is the shot cotton to go with it. Hi, my that that. Is there a green? Um, I'm seeing yeah. green in the centers. There's a green. Yeah, like that. Maybe too bright. I don't know. I don't think it's bad. I wouldn't kick it out of bed for eating crackers. Mm. I'm just saying. Love that. Okay. That's that's that flower. It's this is why you can't really do a two like and a half one. inch strip. This is why you gotta have a six inch roll. Yeah, that's just ugh. and you know the black. I love how he's I think he stayed away from blacks and grays, and he went through a period where he decided black and gray was not a horrible color. And, and even the gray is a very greenish gray, but the black and the gray against these sharp colors just really makes them pop. So. That would look cute as a dog scarf. Oh, I, your dogs. They would you English best... paper piece that, Cappy? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I really would because you can get into these little petals and cut that out and then make them turn. Oh my gosh, I would English paper piece the daylights out of that and a handbag. I like this little hidden design right here. Yeah, I do too. Because you don't see that until you spend time with the fabric. Yes, yes. And these would these would English paper piece. The other thing that he'll, that Cave's fabrics does really well is um, when you look at the stack and whack, they call it stack and whack. Uh, oh yes. Yeah, yeah. There was a customer who we took a picture of her stack and whack, and her name I just can't think of at this moment. I know exactly who it is, but it was oh my gosh. Yeah, I'll bet. Okay, here we go again with the twigs. Love it in another colorway, and that's the thing you'll see if you like a particular pattern. You're going to see it in more than one colorway, you know, so here a minute ago. We saw it in this colorway now. We're seeing it in red and black, so <coughs> Excuse me. Oh look at that gold. Uh, you know, what we're gonna put with that Wow, that's fun. That's fun. That's fun. That's kind of gives a little pop. It just glows. Look at that Those those two were made to be married. It glows. It does glow um and and here's the fun part. The, that's almost kind of a brownish tone, goldy brown in That'd there. That'd be a fun binding. That would be a fun binding. Fun border. Fun border. Fun binding. It'd be fun everything. Be a cool bag. Ugh. I like oh. that stripe. Here I come the stripes. Stripe. Okay, so that's this. That's so fun. Isn't this great? Talk about English paper piecing. Stripes just do amazing things when you English paper piece them. Um, love that. And you know what? I would probably put... A stripe with a stripe. How fun is that? Look at here. Isn't that fun? So cool. What a great garment. Would you do a stripe with a chevron? I'm oh yeah. I would I Look I Look at think, what we have right here. This kind of all Right? They go together right from the top. I you know it was funny, I was trying to kind of sort these and I'm like, no. Is that what did you sort them? I sorted it and then I sort of didn't. I was there were I was I got lost in the moment of playing in the fabric and I couldn't even think straight. I was too excited. 
Oh, that stripe with that, um, this one. Was it pretty? Yes. The, see, and that's the if thing. If you see it something, we gotta put to them together. The shot cottons. Look how fun those are together. Jeez. Isn't that pretty? That's Love really cool. It. I, I, he's a master of color. You kind of have to have it. Cappy, 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 Cappy. What? You have to have a, at least a fat quarter bundle <laughs> to be able to play with all the possibilities because, like, that and that look, look really this, good together. Look at these two together. Look at and these two. And then that two. one down there that you just picked it up from looks good together. I, I mean, that's the beauty of what he creates is, is the color play is so on point that you can mix one with another and it's never going to be wrong. It's just, it's not going to be wrong. You can't be wrong with it. Those are, I love, this pattern is one of my favorites. I think it's a, a lotus leaf. Purple, it just says purple. Oh, lotus leaf. <gasps> hey, ding, ding, Okay, ding. point for that one. I'm, that was pulling it You're out racking up the brain. points today. I am racking up the points today. That's unusual on a Monday. I'm typically not that awake on a Monday. All right, those are beautiful. Here's another chevron. If you didn't like the kind of pastel one, this is the dark one. I'm going to need one of each of the chevrons. I know. They are very pretty, aren't they? I'm it's the dimension. Each of the chevrons. And, and, and it's Where's a play of light. So let's let's just let's just kind There's of that purple. deconstruct a little bit here. If you look at it, it looks like the light is shining on it because the light is here, the dark is there. And then we get the dark and we get the light over here. So that's what makes it look like it has depth. He's played with the way the color changes from light to dark, so it has depth. That's what he's done. All the dots, the color changes the same way. They're light and then they're dark on one side. I mean, that's brilliant. I, 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 I just think that's brilliant, especially in fabric, you know. Oh, look at this. Okay, this is one of my I favorites. Think I, okay, I think I, I would love the chevron for a cushion. A I think it'd make cushion? A, no, um, a seat or a chair, chair cushion? for the back of a chair, like a, or a pillow, oh, yeah. like a big oh. cushion. That'd be lovely on a chair. I mean, that pattern lends itself really good for one of those big cushions for a couch. Mm -hmm. I can't find my words today. That's couch okay. cushion. Couch cushion. There you go. And that's the other thing. I, so many times I think we look at fabric and we think quilts, 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 quilts. Home deck, man. Use this in your home. You know, throw pillows around. Do curtains with it. Just, you know, don't, be, don't limit yourself to quilts because there's more to do with fabric than just make a quilt. Not that that's wrong. Making quilts is fabulous, but um, I love this piece. This just, now that would be really fun in a garment too. Like the shirt I've got on, that this would be just really fun, funky. I love the way this, this looks. Little dress maybe, that'd be fun. Um, oh, this piece, we've had this one before. I think, I don't know, sometimes. This is Philip Jacobs, and I love, love cabbage those, roses. Love those blooms. Yeah, I'm, I'm a cabbage rose. Like, I can't help it. I love a cabbage rose. I, I'm going to guess that's kind of some kind of a lily or something, or maybe a hibiscus. But these kind of cabbage rose kind of thing, that just screams at me. I can't stand how much I love those. And this great big leaf. Look how pretty that leaf is. And, the, and how it's really laying there at an angle. I mean, I, you visually can see the, the movement. That's the word I'm looking for, movement. All his fabric has such movement in it. It just, um, and it's and it is bright, but he does pastels too. It's springtime, folks. It's springtime. Winter's and, over. And you'll hear people go, "Oh, I can't do cape." <laughs> yeah, it is here. I can't do cape because he's so bright. Whoa. Okay, you have to use at least three fabrics. There's your three right there. Make a garment with those three fabrics. Go together, lovely. Pulling out the pink. We're matching Very the purple nice and gray. Very nice and light. Yeah, that's very light. I, I would challenge you for somebody who's Good maybe background. not familiar with Cave Fabric to go, oh, this is Cave Facet. If they have any idea who Cave is, they would be like, really? That's so, so subtle. Um, but it's lovely. Absolutely lovely. i take an Easter dress out of that. Because Easter's going to be here before you know it. I love this. Swirl. Talk about um, English paper piecing. Wah. Want, want, oh my goodness. Okay, if you're going to English paper piece, then I need to make a dog collar. She's got to make a dog collar. <laughs> We're so fun. A little dog handkerchief. Dog handkerchief because, you know. For Easter. For Actually, that Easter. would look really good on Bella because Bella's Aww, mostly white. Oh, yeah, Bella. Bell, Bell. You'll have to get a picture of your poopies on there so they can see how cute. Okay, another one. Love this. 
man's shirt right there. Oh, that's masculine. Shirt for my husband, right on this masculine. puppy. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, and he, he typically, well, I'm not feeling the love on any of those. Been playing with the colors for just a second because we had to kind of find the one that matches this because Peter and I both are just loving this this piece of fabric right here. Um, I think for a man's shirt, this would really, really be sharp. And Peter's quite the tailor, so he, he makes a lot of his own shirts. But with this one, I would use this for the body of the shirt, and then I would use that for inside the collar tab, like inside yes, the collar. I totally agree. Yeah, that the, would be awesome. The facing, maybe inside the cuff, you know, when you have to do the facing pieces. So this just is a subtle piece. It's not real strong, strongly seen. Just kind of peeks out. Just peeks out, yeah. I think that would be fun. So, um, okay, that's Peter's pick. I like that Peter's one. Peter's pick. That's Peter's pick. All right, here we go. Here's this fun one. Again, this lovely stripe, and we have the stripe again also. So we have the stripe in several colorways. Um, I, you just can't go wrong with a stripe. I, there's nothing bad about a stripe ever, never, ever, ever. I'm probably gonna put that with this. There's his favorite orange again. Yeah, there's my orange. There's your orange, and I'm gonna go this way. On this oh one. yeah, love that. What do you think? Did we get it? Yes. Did we hit that here? Let me lay them down. I don't have enough arms. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, and this is great. And and I'm back to my shirt thing. You know, I would I would like this for a shirt for me. Now these are directional, okay? Cave stuff is usually non-directional. These little flowers, to my thinking, I'm going to flip them around. Those to me need to go that way. Now, if directional doesn't bother you, don't don't sweat it. It's, it's you know don't pet the sweaty stuff and don't sweat the petty stuff. So don't worry about that if it's not a problem for you. But someone might buy this and then realize when they got home, oh, it's directional. Be sure you buy enough. Your um, English paper piecing class that you have on YouTube for the pin cushion. Yes. The stripe would be perfect for the scale of your hexes. Yes. And if you did the if you alternated that black and white, black and white, black, and it went yes. around in the pin cushion, oh. it's the perfect size and scale. It is, and you just need a fat quarter for that. I mean, or you don't even have to buy a fat quarter. You could buy a quarter of a yard and get away with, or an eighth of a yard. You can get an eighth of a yard. I would make a neat pin cushion. Let's see how many pins. And it's directional, so it would like flower it out. It, it would be, would. it'd be almost a flower shape, but then it would look like a flower. It would look like a flower. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and how many pin cushions do you need? How many? All, all, all the pin cushions. As many as you can make. <laughs> as as you can make. Look at here. It's that stunning. Put this shot behind it and do the half and half. There we go. Like that? Just yes. Peeking out just a yep. little bit of it. Again, I would, I would make a shirt out of this too. That and would make a good shirt. It would make a great shirt. And I got a suspicion. Actually, that'd make a really good um, handkerchief for a dog because Bella's white and that's got a white background. <laughs> oh, with pink trim. She'd like that. Yeah, there you go. For your little poopy. She, we call her our little pink nose puppy because she has a pink Aww. nose. And it's heart shaped. And she's it a rescued whippet, it. right? Is that uh -uh. no? No, we got them from a a, a breeder, oh, a okay. show breeder. Oh, okay. So she's got but we pedigree. Don't, we don't show. She's got pedigree going on. All right, so with this one, I'm going to pull some of these stripes because I haven't really been showing you with the stripes. Oh, you're going to do some stripes now. I see. But that's fun. I like that. I do too. It's I think nice. I think we have to, you know, learn to mix our that's patterns. That's a bag a right bit. there. Yeah, oh yeah. It'd be that's a great bag. A bag. Actually, okay, I want to back up. I'm going to go with applique on that one. Oh yes. I would cut those out and applique them on something else. Now, there is a quilt pattern. And I want to say it's in one of his books. If you if you're familiar with Cave, he writes he has a book like every 6 months to a year, he puts out a book. And in that book is a pattern where they just use the oh, centers wow. of all the flowery part parts and it is Man. one of the most beautiful quilt patterns. I mean, this would be so cool for that. Mhm. Mm yeah, it would cut up Oh, nice. look at the poppies. Poppies will make them sleep. Yeah, that is a poppy, isn't it? Sure is. Poppies will make them sleep because they have opium in them. Yay. Okay. Let's keep going here. Eye candy. Ugh. Okay, look, I'm just going to go right back to this again. Look at here. Look at that. Look how perfectly those go together. That lavender is right there. The kind of rusty color picks up in here. That is just perfect. 
You'd have thought he'd have put those to go together, wouldn't you? It's almost like the same person designed them. It might, almost is. It almost is. PWP, the initials before this one are, uh, I can't find it. And if they're not, their desks are across from each other. Yeah, exactly. They're sharing the same And they're office. like holding up their swatches. They're, hand, they're, they're at the same desk area, that's for sure. All right, there's that one. And then here's this one. Another one of these circles. I love this one. I love the gray background on this. Mm. I love how it just p makes those... Pink and gray. Pink and gray. Let's pull the pink one on that one. You could put the gold that, one. That print right there on the card. Oh, you want the gray? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Let's a good one. Let's try that. So this is like this is like playing with crayons, isn't it? Boom. Ooh, boom. There oh, did we go. say it at the same time? We did. Boom. Okay, pinch poke. You owe me a Coke. Yeah, isn't that fun? Wow. That's just... <sighs> I can't even tell you how excited I am to have these fabrics. And and I had made a New Year's resolution to go on a fabric <laughs> diet. And like all diets that we make as New Year resolutions, they don't always work so well. I have a feeling the diet is going to go like out the window today. Because one yard cut of each bolt, please. Cut. Oh my gosh, yeah. And... And two and a half of the back. I and already two, know. Yeah. Oh, I got to have the Melaflora back. I think I'll probably go with the lighter one. Yeah. Um, and I'll typically get, so when, so let me just, so let's just have this little conversation. Um, when I don't know what I'm going to do with fabric, I'm, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to make out of this. I could be making uh, bags. I could be making a quilt. But I buy enough to think, okay, if I made a quilt, what am I going to make? And what I like to do is pick the fabric that really speaks to me. You know, whatever piece, like, okay, I'll just tell you right now. This is one that just absolutely speaks to me. So if I don't know what I'm going to do with them, this one, I'm going to get two yards. Because typically two yards will make a border. It can be the feature fabric in a quilt. It's more than enough to make a bag and really make it the focus fabric if I have two yards. And then everything else that I just like because it's part of the rest of the line, I'm probably going to get one yard. Or even some of them that aren't as exciting, I might get fat quarters. Um, but, but I hear people all the time, it's like, oh, I love that fabric, but I don't know what I'm going to do with it. How much should I buy? Well, you know, I'm going to tell you, buy the whole bulb because <laughs> I want to sell fabric. I'm just here to sell fabric. But I just love to sell fabric. I just love to sell fabric. <laughs> some of you who live in Indiana know that reference. There was a, a retailer who... Who was, that was his commercial. I just love to sell. And he sold something I won't tell you, but anyway. Um, so typically, I'm going to buy a two-yard cut of the one that just sings to me. And the rest of them, I'm probably going to go either all halves. If it's a lot, I'm probably going to have to go all halves because of the cost. Or I'm going to go all one-yard cuts. If it's a smaller line, I may do all one-yard cuts. There's so many choices here, I'll probably have to do halves because of the budget. Um, and then these shot cottons, those are ones I'm probably going to get one yard on because they're just so versatile. They really, um, I'm amazed how many times I can just pull one of these and use it for a binding, use it for uh, a lining on a purse. I can, you know, it's just that little pop of solid color. Um, and I'm going to kind of line these up here for you that I like. <clears throat> wide backs, 108 inch wide back. I'm going to buy three yards because then I have 108 by 108 and I have a nice big square. Pretty much there's not very many quilts that aren't going to fit on 108 by 108. There's your shot cottons all in a row in no particular order. There's my shot. There you are. There's your shot shot. <laughs> oh, shoot. And then I need to correct what I said because truth in advertising. <laughs> oh, correctione. Correctiones. So there's... There two are packs? two colorways. This is your light. This oh, is your dark. The darks. So I didn't, I didn't speak correctly when I started this video. And well, we did. That one was hiding under a bolt. It was hiding under a bolt. And so here's your dark, or his bold, as he would call them. Ooh. And then these are his pastels, which I, it cracks me up. In Kafe's world, that's a pastel, you know. So yeah, we got two different, two different colorways. Same applies to these. This is your light. That's your dark. Okay. So, I think, was that enough dessert? I love dessert. It is kind of my favorite part. Okay, let's of go through all of them again. Let's just do it again. You know what? They can just rewind it, right? And watch oh, it again. Yeah. 
<laughs> I keep forgetting that. I keep forgetting it. And I think some of you do because we get enough views that it feels like, what are they watching it again? But but yeah, this was dessert. It's my favorite part of the menu. I'm in, I will order just an appetizer just so I can enjoy the dessert because that's the best part, right? Um, so yeah, these are definitely yummy. They'll be on the sales floor pretty quick. If you want, if you really do want a complete set of everything, call our orders department. Jennifer or Deborah will be happy to set you up with what you need. These will sell fast. I just put that disclaimer. As soon as you see this video, if you want it, call us or come in. Even better, because you know, touch of vision doesn't exist yet. Even on the Jetsons, they didn't have touch of vision. They had a lot of things on Jetsons that we have now. But um, touch of vision is not one we've got to yet. So come in and touch it. You'll fall in love with it. And Peter's going to be making how many dog scarves? Apparently a lot. <laughs> Apparently a lot. For the whole neighborhood. <laughs> Every dog in the world is going to be walking around. But how cool would that be? You get a bandana. You, get, you a get a bandana. Yeah, those little puppy You know, dogs. I might have to actually make a cowboy scarf. One of those oversized, Ooh. I think it's 42 by 42. The because nice, the, the fabric's so soft well, and yeah. silky, it'd when, make a good cowboy scarf. So if scarf. you showed up at the barn where you work with the with the horses and bale and hay and all thing, and you had a cave scarf on, would that how would the how would your coworkers there kind of go, wow, that's a cool scarf, or would they go like, oh, that's well, it depends which color I picked. If I did the masculine one, they'd be oh, that's cool. If I did one of those far far out ones, like one of those yellow bright, yeah, you know, yellow when the sun's shining on a hot summer day. I don't know. I might get some looks. We'll might see. get some looks. But we'll you know see. what? Who cares? I think at the end of the day, you got to do what works for you. Do you. You do you. I am so into that movement. Do what makes you feel good, makes you happy. I love color. I love bright. Some people in our store are just, we, we roll this in and they're like, what are you thinking? And then, of course, there's more of us, because we know where we are, that go, this is amazing. So stop by. Come see us. We love your comments, so be sure you comment on this video. And um, I hope you're having a really happy stitchy day. It's going to be a great day for me because I think I'm going to go buy a little cave. So happy stitching.